people, this is what you need. You need to remain in God. The grace of God is sufficient for you. Amen. Thank you. Let's take our Bible to the book of John. John chapter 15. We are going to take our reading from verse 4. The scripture says, Remain in me, and I will do what? Uh, who's talking there? Jesus. He said, Remain in me, and I will do what? What does that mean? What does it imply? Okay. Jesus here is giving us the implication that he does not want a temporary relationship with us. He did not only say, come to me. When he say, remain, it means you are already, I cannot tell you, you are already there. He cannot say remain if you are not there. So the reason why he's saying remain is because, let me just give an example of a call. There's somebody I've been trying to contact to come to the church. Mm. They were coming from somewhere and they gave me a call. Ah, oh, man of God, I want to live here. I'm coming that side. Okay. Then after some 10 minutes, I call. Why are you? No, I'm still on my way. I think I'm five kilometers away from Kopo. Okay. Three minutes afterwards, I call. Where are you? I think I'm just arriving. I'm by, by the gate. I'm not sure. I'm seeing one gate here, the other one there. There's some, um, okay. After one minute, um, where are you? No. I think I have arrived. I've just met one of your people here. I think this is an Asha. I just met an evangelist. And then by the time they tell me, you know, I'm there. I say, no, remain there. I'm coming. You're listening. Yes. Once they are there, they should do what now? Yes. Waiting for? For me. So this is Jesus Christ. Now that you are in my presence, what should you do? Yes. Jesus Christ is giving us an indication that he does not want a temporary relationship with us, which many here are after. A lot of people here are not here for a permanent relationship, but, but many of you are here for a temporary relationship. Temporary relationship meaning, if only I can get this, if only I can get that, if only I can be healed, if only I can be delivered, if only I can be blessed, if only I can prosper, if only I can get a new job. This is what many of you are here for, temporary relationship. But for him to say, remain in me, this implies that Jesus does not want a temporary relationship with us, but rather a permanent one. I, I don't know if we are, we are, we are together there. Jesus does not want a temporary relationship with us, but rather, what is he looking for? A permanent relationship. Let's continue. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. No matter how long a branch may take in the vine, if you remove it, it will surely die. This is you. No matter how long you take as a Christian, that does not qualify you to stand alone. No, I've been Jesus since I was born. I think I'm strong enough. I think I'm mature enough. I think I'm wise enough. I think I'm, mm, I'm smart enough to stand alone now. I don't need him. It does not happen. Oh, I'm a pastor now. I think I'm a man of God. I don't need Jesus because, mm, no. We, no matter how long we may take as a Christian in our relationship with Jesus, that will never qualify us to stand alone. Meaning, independent from his presence. Forever and ever we need him. Listen to his statement in that book of John when he was addressing his people. He said, I came from the Father, 
and now I am going back to he said whatever I've been doing here I do what I saw my father doing Jesus came from the father lived here through the father when he left earth where did he go back to the father that is but a mirror of our lives the life of Jesus is but a mirror of our lives we came from him we can only live through him because we are going back to him Are you, are you listening to me? Say, I came from him. I can only live through him because I'm going back to him. That's it. Mm -hmm. You are coming from him. You can only live through him because you are going to. I cannot tell you. And in the same vein, whatever comes from him can only be through him because it is for. If this healing is from him, I can only maintain it through him. Because it is for it is for his glory. If this deliverance is from him, I can only maintain this deliverance true because that is it. If I'm coming, if the life that is within me is from him, I can only maintain this life through him because it is for that is it. So let's, let's listen to this language. No matter how long you may take as a Christian, that will never qualify you for living independent from Jesus. I was born a Christian. I was born on the altar of the church. My mother is a bishop. I've been eating the Lord's Supper every week. I have the Holy Spirit. For over 15 years, mm. I've got so much blessing. I'm healed, I'm delivered, I'm blessed, I'm saved. I think now, I'm mature, I'm wise, I'm smart. And because of that, I can take it from here to the grave by myself. I don't need him. The truth of the matter is, the more you near him, the closer you get the more they need for him, you get to realize. I, I want to repeat this language. I want to repeat this language. The more you near him, the more you relate with him, the closer you get to Jesus, the more you understand the need for Jesus. You didn't realize, hmm, I never knew I need Jesus this much. I don't know if somebody's getting me. Yes. It's like a, the relationship of marriage. This is how blessed it is. The closer you get with your spouse, the more you realize you cannot do without them. I cannot do without this man. If you still find room, that you can still do without him, it is because that relationship was never close enough. That is it. So, with Jesus, the same applies. The closer you get to Jesus, the more you realize, ah, I need him, I thought I know him. This is because of the revelation. Because when you approach him, revelation come. Your eyes become open. Oh, I never knew Jesus this. I thought I knew Jesus. But I can see, I don't know Jesus. I need to know him more. What he told me in his presence, what I have learned in his presence made me realize that I am but an infant. I need to learn more. Because every time you're with Jesus, there's a revelation. Hmm. Let us continue. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. 
It must remain where? I cannot hear. Mm. Neither can you bear fruit unless you. Mm. Yeah, listen. He said, Neither can you bear what? Unless. Verse 5. I'm divine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear what? Much, much, much. Fruit in abundance. Hmm. Remains. Not just coming when you are stranded. True, thick and thin with him. Laughing and crying with him. Blessed and cursed with him. Black and white with him. Not just remembering him when you are stranded. After you woke up with a bad dream, you remember to pray. But if you sleep, you dream okay, you don't see the need to pray. When your boss gives you a call and say, we are just about to retrench. I would love to keep you, but because of the position of my business, I think you are one of those who are living. That's when you pray. That's when you come to church. This is not remaining. This is not a relationship. When he say remain, it means true, thick, and thin. True poverty and blessing. True sickness and good health with him. True blessing and what? Cursing with him. In the valley of the shadow of death with him. In a tunnel of abundance with him. This is, this is remain. Not on some circumstances as this has been your way of thinking and your way of life. You only give offering when there is a tender you need. When you get the tender awarded to you, you now have money. You don't see the need to give again. This is not a relationship. The praise and worship has been singing. Now, those here whose lives are doing well were dancing their best. Those whose fridge is full. Those among you here who at home, there's only water in the fridge, you were sad the whole time. You could not dance because you are not happy. Jesus understands, I'm not happy. This is not a relationship. This is not what you mean by remain. Those who were dancing during the time of worship, uh, all of them, if you go to them and ask them, how is it going? They say, oh, no, <laughs> the grace of God is sufficient. <laughs> they say, no, I could tell. The way you were dancing, my brother, they say, yes. Bless the name of the Lord. Let the same people, something bad happen to them. You see them, even the way they drive. Every time they come to the church at 80, now they become at foot. Meaning they are dragging their feet going to the church. This is not a relationship. Even the way they enter, you see the way they enter. These people are downcast. These people are sad. During the time of worship, they are sitting down. Because Jesus must understand that they are not in a good mood. Huh? You call that a relationship? 
That is not a relationship. He said, remain in me. Remain in me. Through thick and thin, I'm your Lord. In death and in life, I'm your God. In blessing and in cursing, I am your God. When you are healthy and when you are sick, I am your God. When you are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I am your God. When you are sitting before a table of abundance, remember me, I'm still your God. That is why when you read that book of Deuteronomy, he said, please, you need to check yourself out. Let's when you now walk in abundance, you have built yourself fine houses. You eat and you get full. Check! Lest you forget that I am the Lord who gives you ability to make that wealth. This is my God. Don't forget him. <laughs> am I talking to you here? This is where many, this is where many people are sitting in the church. Look at you in the house of God today. I don't consider your presence yet genuine. I don't consider your presence in God's house yet genuine. I know because of a predicament, because of a problem, you are here. So when you say, I love Jesus, it is not genuine. Testing of your faith is coming. The testing of your faith is coming. When things are bad, will you still come with a smile on your face? Hmm? When you are entering there by the gate and the security man, you are the one who arrive first and he skip you and call the other person and say, wait there. But you arrive first. And he skip you again. The Lord may test you through that. And skip you again. Still they are not putting you. They are putting the third one. You are still waiting there. They go to the third one. You are still there. You are more likely to leave and say, this is not a church. This is a card. You failed your test. Satan is excited. <laughs> mm. He said, ah. Look at you, say, these people here, they are not well mannered. This is, this is favoritism. The devil inside you say, mm -mm, I like it. This is what I wanted. You feel, this is the testing of your faith. If you enter the church after such a thing, will you still come vibrant with a bright face to bless the name of the Lord as if nothing happened? Do you see where you are sitting? This is not a relationship. The Lord says, remain. Tell your neighbor, remain. remain. Tell your neighbor. Remain. I cannot tell you. Remain. Let's continue. I am divine, verse 5. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do what? Oh my God. Nothing means zero. You see, even to sit, sitting like this, which you consider natural, huh? it's not natural, it's by the grace of God. If we remove grace from you, you cannot sit here. Hmm. You see you are sitting down. You say it's, nat it's not natural. It's the grace of God. If we remove the grace of God for you and we say sit here, look at people sometimes when they are prayed for during prayer line with lumbar corset, with the, the, the spine. When they sit down, 
you sit down in a split second, they may take 10 minutes. This is to, these are things to show you that my God, I must be grateful to God. Look at the woman, the way she's struggling. And she's not the worst sinner. I can be the same way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this grace. This is the grace of God. Mm. So this is why he said, listen to this. He said, apart from me, you can do what? I cannot tell you. If anyone does not remain in me, verse 6, if anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you do what? You bear much fruit. Showing yourselves to be my I cannot tell you. Why should you bear much fruit? Showing yourselves to be my that is for the glory of his name. If you are showing yourself to be your disciple by bear much fruit it means that prosperity is not for your glory, but for the glory of God. You don't take pride in it, but you let the name of the Lord be glorified. Good people, this is what you need. You need this. You need to remain in God. Don't just come to God because of a predicament. Break the habit of remembering prayer only when there is pain you pray this is a very bad habit that if care is not taken this is what will lead you to hell because you will never know your last day on earth Jesus himself said I will come like a thief when I am least expected. So you don't know. Will he come when you are smiling or when you are frowning? He will not look first to see if you are smiling or you are frowning. He will not look first to see if, to see if you are in, in the church or not in the church and wait for you. No. He's waiting for the command of the Father to come. Can you ask yourself now, if he were to come now, where would you be going? You and don't say because I'm in the church. The church sometimes can be a shelter. There is a spiritual church which is church by heart. Some of you are here in body, but your heart is at home. There is something you left there you've been thinking about. That is where you truly are. Where your heart is, that's where you truly are. Let's take to the book of Luke. We take Luke 15, verse 11. The scripture says, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country and there, squandered his wealth in wild living. Now the motive is being revealed. Why did he ask his dad to share the property between the two of them? He thought he was wise enough. He thought he was old enough to live away from the presence of his father. No, I've been with my dad from my childhood. I think now I've learned enough, I'm okay now, I'm wise, I'm mature. So if he can give me what I have, I think I will survive by myself. This is the mind of many people. The Lord has given me, the Lord has blessed me, I'm this, I've got a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. I think now I can survive on my own. This is the mentality of this boy. 
14. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country. And he began to be in need. This is the reality of life. He began to be in what? In need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. Look at the boy, the son of a very rich man, very, very rich. Left his father's presence very, very rich. Went to a distant country, squandered all his wealth in wide living. After some time, there was a severe famine in the land. And the boy now, because he had nothing, he began to be in need. The reality. This is why Jesus says, remain in me. Get blessed, but remain. Get healed, but remain. Get married, remain. Get rich, remain. I don't know if you are there. Yes. You are there? Yes. Hmm. 16, which is very key there. He longed to fill his stomach with the pots that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Jesus is the greatest prophet the world has ever known. This here, this parable he gave is but a prophecy. This is a prophecy. Jesus is the greatest prophet the world has ever known. There was nobody greater than Jesus. He's the all-knowing God. So this year, you call it a parable, it's a prophecy. He's telling you that without him, there's nothing you can do. Let's continue to finish. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. Good people. This book of Luke chapter 15 verse 11 teaches us and gives us and make vivid the reason why Jesus said, remain in me and I will remain in me because without me, you can do nothing. The world we are today, many of the educated class have set aside their degree. When you go to this, uh, you call them constructor, 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 businessman, businessman, tender man, tender woman. Many of them, they are sitting on degree. They went to school for many years, but they are not making use of what they learned and took so many years at school for. They have put aside today a lot of them. You are one of them, you know what I'm talking about. Even the field you are, you have compromised. Many of you, the field you are, you have compromised. It is not what you exactly learn for. You had to compromise. Because had you had to stick on your qualification, you would be unemployed until now. So you had to compromise to put bread at home. You need Jesus. Go to your job and look for the highest office. The highest person at your workplace is not necessarily the most educated. Many of you are more educated than the people at the top, but they're still topping you to tell you it's not about education. Grace happens to us all. It is not education which makes you to be a leader. You need grace, you need chance. If you are given a chance, if the Lord allows you, you can be a leader, you can be a president. We may take it down, we go to Joseph, my friend, in the scripture, that book of Genesis. For him to become the prime minister, he did not observe protocol. No. He was not a politician. He was only a man of God. 
He left his country because his brother sold him and because of jealousy and hatred, they sold him to Egypt. But Joseph was a different man. He did not say, why did God allow me to be sold to a different nation while my brothers are enjoying their father's love? They're enjoying their father's care. Look at me. I'm here now. I'm a foreigner. No. Joseph continued to remain in God Almighty. He served God as if he was in his native land. He continued to serve God. And because of that, when you read your Bible, I like it. The Bible says, because the Lord was with him, everything that was entrusted under his care prospered. It's our secret. Our secret of prosperity is not our wisdom. It's not our intelligence. It's not our educational background. But because God is with us, when we touch, it get blessed. When we touch, it gets blessed. When we touch, it changes. Not because of us, but because of him. When Potiphar looked at Joseph, he realized that this is not an ordinary boy. Whatever I live under his care grows. He then said, you are now going to take care of everything that I have, except my woman. Because he saw the grace of God as too much on him. Joseph continued. And whatever that was left under his care was blessed more than ever. When the woman of this Potiphar was used by the devil to be lustful to him, tried to destroy him, wanted to sleep with him, Joseph remembered his secret. It's like I can hear him in his heart. I'm prospering not because I'm cute. My father's business, my boss's business is not prospering because I'm intelligent. The presence of God is the secret of blessing with me. Woman, if I sleep with you, God is leaving me. And if God is leaving me, kiwaka man, please get away from me. Joseph remembered the secret of his blessing. Do you ever remember the secret of your blessing? Do you ever take time to ponder over the means of getting where you are? If not God, where would I be? Do you ever take your time? So the Lord is saying, listen to him. Remain in me and I will. Means don't be looking for me because you need the money of Lobola. Don't just be after me because you are looking for a job. God is not looking for a temporary relationship with us, but rather a permanent one. I I hope we are together, church. Don't forget, the God of the valley is still guarding the mountain. 